Welcome, Catholicos, Catholics, Orthodox, Christians, all who seek the truth. Today I'm going to share with you a, uh, an article um, from, I guess, the um, um, newsletter of the Hermits of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. First of all, I encourage everybody to support financially um, this religious orders order. It's a Carmelite order, a strict observance Carmelite order, traditional order, uh, following the ancient rule of Saint Albert, and wearing the monastic uh, tonsure, clerical tonsure, and celebrating the ancient liturgy, the real Roman rite the so-called Latin Mass. Uh, and they are approved by the diocese, and I think they're in Pennsylvania. I'll give you more info on them, but if you just search for Hermits of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, you will find them. And then there's as well the, uh, uh, the female branch. I'm not sure if they're associated, but there's a traditional... Watch my video on the traditional Catholic orders. You'll find both of them mentioned. Anyways, this is from the Hermits of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And I got this is was published, I guess, in the end of October, thereabouts. But whatever they say in this uh, newsletter, in this article, is, um, is valid for, I'm guessing, years and years in the future. Um, so anyways, it is called The Revolt. The Revolt. And it starts off by coding... Um, uh, scripture quoting, uh, first of all, Pilate, who asks Jesus, what is truth? And of course, Christ himself is the way, the truth, and the life. Anyway, and then, of course, and, and it quotes as well, so it's basically taking the position of the people, Pilate. What is truth? I don't know. What is truth? You know, like your truth, and his truth, and our truth, and the truth as I see it. No, truth is truth. Light is light. Dark is dark. Black is black. White is white. Gray is gray. There is a distinction. So what is truth? Truth is truth. Truth cannot contradict truth. So what is truth? And then it has the quote of the, uh, the people when he says, well, Caesar says, uh, Pilate says, uh, this is uh, your king about Jesus Christ. He's your king to the um, to the people in the in the in in front of his uh, when they were in front of the high priests and the the people, and they and the high priests encouraged the people to say, "No, we have no king but Caesar," and we are living in a time now where we say no to Christ, no to his church no to his law, we have no king but the state, we have no king but the president, we have no king but the prime minister, we have no king other than the health doctators. And who cares about what Christ says, who cares what the church says, who cares what scripture says, who cares what God himself says, doesn't matter. So let me not waste you too much time. I want to read you this article, The Revolt, John 18, 38 and 19, 15. What is truth? We have no king but Caesar. And you can see the picture here, Pilate and Jesus Christ. And then, it is the solemn teaching. These are from the hermit monks of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. It is the, and what they say is, absolutely true. It is the solemn teaching of the apostolic faith and of the Holy Catholic Church, which is the one and only true Church of Jesus Christ, and our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that our Lord Jesus Christ is the ultimate and supreme King over all all creation so he's not just the king of uh, my my soul he's the king of my heart he's the king of my apartment or house no he's the king of all creation the first pope saint peter proclaimed he is lord of 
all. You can see it highlighted here. He is Lord of all. Not of some, not of just the Jews, or of the Israelites, or of the Christians, or of the whatever. No, he's the Lord of all. The beautiful preface of the feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King, prays to God the Father thus, and I'm going to quote it. Actually, I have a whole video on the feast of Christ the King. If you look at the section for the Latin Mass videos, I have a whole video of the Feast of Christ the King where I go through all the proper prayers and I comment on them. And I think you'll find that uh, interesting. Um, and this is the quote of the preface. And what is the preface in case you don't know? This is the preface uh, where the pre where it's the before the holy, 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 when he says, you know, uh, lift up your hearts to the Lord. We, we give unto, thanks unto the Lord our God. And then he says, it is truly meet and just, right and salutary. And, and that's the preface. That's the preface. So, O Lord, Holy Father, omnipotent, eternal God, who didst anoint with the oil of gladness thine only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, eternal priest and king of the universe, universal king of everything and everyone, that offering himself as an immaculate pacifying victim, hostium, hostium, on the altar of the cross, he might accomplish the mystery of human redemption. And having all creatures subject to his rule. All creatures. It actually includes the animals, the bugs, the insects, and all of creation itself. The trees. And but of course, most of all, of the rational creatures, which is humanity. All creatures subject to his and having all creatures subject to his rule might deliver thy immense majesty and eternal and uh, might deliver to thy immense majesty an eternal and universal kingdom kingdom has a king a kingdom of truth and life a kingdom of holiness and grace a kingdom of justice love and peace that's a preface for the feast of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King. Whether you like it or not, he is King. Christ, and you have to think of it, it is not being too um, uh, illogical. Christ Jesus is God incarnate. He is the creator of everything and everyone. There is, as St. Paul says, the whole universe is held uh, by his power. And everything was made by him and through him and for him. So he is God. And as God, he is king. Whether you like to say he is your God or is not, it doesn't matter what you think. It is an absolute fact. Like if I make a, 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 a robot and give it... A, AI and the AI says, no, I don't believe you You made me. I'm not going to follow you. No, you better follow me because I made you. Whether you, you're, you're my little, you little robot with the AI and you think you can think, they are going to reject me who made you. Uh, think again. Uh, that's basically if you want to think about it that way. Of course, we are far more than robots. But in any case, you do not have the natural right to reject he who made you and you know the breath you take is by his good will so christ is constituted king here it is christ is constituted king not by human election or popular opinion he is established king by divine decree and eternal ordinance can be changed that is not not subject to change or subversion by creatures. Cannot be done. His kingdom is based on eternal truth. That's the thing 
truth, people don't think of it. My truth, and I feel that this is the truth, and I feel, I feel this is true to me. There's no such thing as about feeling about truth. You think, I think this is true, I believe, I, because of logical deduction, not because I feel it's true. That's, that's the problem with the world today. Everybody's feeling, 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 and not thinking at all. The kingdom. His kingdom is based on eternal truth and the divine life that he lovingly offers to those who accept and obey him. Hence, as the supreme shepherd and Lord of humanity, Christ said to Pontius Pilate during his passion, I am a king. So Christ himself says, I am a king. For this was I born, and for this came I into the world, that I should guest, give testimony to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Because Jesus said, my sheep hear me. They know who their shepherd is. So if you don't hear the truth, if you don't hear him, you are not part of his flock. You are not part of the one flock, which here is, hears the truth who is Christ incarnate. Even those who do not want, so the monks of Our Lady of Mount Carmel are reminding us again, even those who do not want to be subject to Christ, who refuse to acknowledge and obey, that's the key word, his, his truth, because he is truth, and abide in his love, are in fact subject to his dominion and judgment, whether they like it or not, because he is God. It is not, <clears throat> it is not man's volition, meaning his will, or willing that it is not man's volition or willing that establishes reality, but God's sovereign creative will. Thus erected as the divine king and redeemer of the human race, Christ alone judges. So you can't take Christ out of the equation of anything in life, out of any political event, out of any um, social question. He is the king of all, over all, and he made everything. He made everything and everyone, and everything and everyone is subject to him and to his will, to his truth, because he is truth. There is no deception in him. Um, so... Christ alone judges each person according to their adherence to adherence to and defection from the truth. He reveals. He reveals. Not anybody makes up a new gospel. As St. Paul warned, even if I or even an angel from heaven preach to you a different gospel than the one that was preached to you, let him be anathema. So even St. Paul anathematizes himself if he comes around to the, to, to the original, uh, to the first converse and gives them, preaches to them another gospel, a perversion of the one gospel, of the faith once for all to deliver to the saints, as St. Jude says. Thus, thus he most lovingly admits his faithful ones to the blessed abode of his eternal kingdom. Or, that's the other part which people don't mention these days, oh, he's a loving, he's, he's merciful, he'll bring you into his kingdom. 
Yes, for those who obey him, who love him, who adhere to him, who believe the truth, act upon the truth, and defend the truth. Not those who spit in his face, not those who deny him. He said, he who denies me before men, I will deny him before my father. So what else? So what is he do? does he most lovingly admits his faithful ones to the blessed abode of his eternal kingdom or casts away into the outer darkness of hell those who unrepentantly rebel against his kingship, teaching, and authority. And that goes, goes for anybody. There is no rank in the secular world or in the church where one can defy the Lord of all willingly, knowingly, and be admitted into the kingdom or escape the judgment. No. Jesus will say, I never knew you. Go out into the outer, outer darkness where there is gnashing of teeth and wailing. Um, so he will cast away into the outer darkness of hell those who unrepentantly rebel against his kingship teaching and authority. And he quotes Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus coming said to them, saying, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. So we can't say, oh, well, Jesus just, uh, he's in heaven, you know. Uh, you know, things which are spiritual, then Jesus cares about. Nothing about the earth, about politics, about how people live, about morality. No, this is just spiritual. He's in heaven, you know. Spiritual stuff. Let's not deal with the mundane. No, he has power, not just in heaven, but in earth. And remember, the Our Father, let thy will be done in heaven as it is on earth. So it's not like the will of God just in heaven. Well, let, let people be free on earth. Let them do whatever they, whatever they want to do in defiance of the Lord of all. No. And Jesus coming said to them, All power is given to me in heaven and in earth. Matthew 28, 18. Today in the United States and abroad, so we're not restricted to the U.S. only, it is a universal apostasy that's happening, a, revol a universal revolt against the divine King, Jesus Christ. Today in the United States and abroad, we are witnessing a radical, liberal, political wing that shows itself in to be obstin obstinately and even violently opposed to the right to life, religious freedom, and the authority of natural or divine truths. Natural truths, male and female, boy and girl, right and wrong, or divine truths. As millions of babies are butchered in the, in the womb in abortions, sexual immorality is taught and promoted. Violence is celebrated and tolerated. Churches are closed or burned. And that's not just in the U.S. It is happening in all over Europe, in France. Remember Notre Dame de Paris? The, the, what happened to the investigation? Nothing, because it was set to burn. They burned down the cathedral of Notre Dame. And it's happening in South America, in Chile, in uh, Argentina. These, these uh, liberals, you know how liberal liberals are, the real fascists, the antichrists, communists, burning churches, burning cathedrals. Where are the faithful defending the temples of God? Lukewarmness. People don't care. Very few are standing up to Satan's minions. Churches are closed because of your health, you know, because of your health, or burned. And the voices of those speaking the truth, speaking the truth, are censored and silenced. Ain't that the truth? 
Not only censors and silence, but those who speak the truth are criticized, called various names, called intolerant. Well, the sun is shining. Oh, that's, that's too intolerant. You're speaking, you're being too absolutist. The sky is blue. Well, how come it's blue? Why are you being racist again red? Doesn't it sometimes turn to red? Well, yeah, people who speak the, the plain truth. Biology. There are two sexes, male and female. Let's start, stop using the word gender. Gender is for language. Language. Female gender? No, in, in like in French or, or Spanish. That is where the word gender would be correct to be used for human beings or animals, it is sex. The male sex or the female sex. That is objective reality. But unfortunately, we are not living in reality. We are living in a global, universal delusion. I don't know what happened to people. People can't think anymore. They are they just can't think. They watch it the one minute on television. Of course, you should stop watch stop watching television. Really, uh, just wa uh, reduce the amount of television because all it is is propaganda, especially for children. Children, they are being brainwashed in schools above all. That's why I keep your children in. Catholic schools, and double check on your Catholic schools that your Catholic schools are being Catholic, that they're teaching Catholic morality, that they're teaching Catholic uh, doctrine, that they're teaching Catholic ethics, that they are not succumbing to the spirit of the world, which is the spirit of the devil, that they are not perverting the minds of your children to accept evil as good and good as evil. We have to be careful even in Catholic schools, unfortunately. Of course, public schools, you know what goes on in there. Your brainwashing of your children, they will come out believing absolute evil as good. Look at all the destruction that has happened in the... It is still happening all over the world. Burning churches, rioting, destruction. In the name of what? In the name of hatred of God. That's what it is. It is a rebellion. It is a demonic, Luciferian rebellion against God and his church. And the worst of all, we have infiltrators in the church. Judases who support evil, who sell Christ, not just for 30 uh, pieces of silver, for much more than that, and even for much less than that, and sometimes for nothing just because they do hate Christ and do hate truth. Let's, let's finish up here. Because Christ's reign is not confined to the private domain. So he's not just, uh, okay, keep your religion in your house now. Don't bother, don't impose your religion on us. Don't impose your morality. Just keep it in your house. Uh, you know, in some parts of Europe, like in, I believe in Germany, where parents are, they're not allowed to do uh, homeschooling. They come and take the kids away. You're teaching them Christianity. That's intolerant against the, the state, the state religion of evil. So even they will inter in, come into your own home to just. To, 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 to take your children away from you for teaching them reality, for teaching them truth, because it is against. They talk about liberty, they talk about freedom, but the only freedom they want is the freedom of evil. If you stand up against evil, they come against you. If you stand up for the freedom of the children of God, for the freedom of truth, you are silenced you are attacked you are criticized you are insulted you are demonized you are demonized by the demons because christ reign is not confined to the to the private domain there is a grave responsibility for catholics to vote only 
for public officials who acknowledge, acknowledge and uphold the natural law. Now, sometimes we have, say, two candidates. One is absolutely against everything God and his church teaches, and he might pretend to be a member of God's church, which makes him a worse than a Judas. And another person who may be unaware, maybe will tolerate things against the natural law. In that case, what are we to do? Do we go with absolute evil or we go with somebody who's trying to, eh, is indifferent or he might, he will give us our freedom to be true children of the truth, but he will allow evil because he's indifferent to it. In that case, again, we, can, we have to choose the one who is maybe not completely on our side, but definitely not against us. So, anyway, so let me read this again. Because Christ's reign is not confined to the private domain, there is a grave responsibility for Catholics to vote only for public officials who acknowledge and uphold the natural law, of which the Creator is the author. So natural law is God himself is the author, because God is the maker of nature. He made the universe. So the laws of nature are the law of God. And who respect who respect and preserve the liberty and authority of God's holy Catholic Church. So they can't intervene and say, oh, no, 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 you can't be chanting in church. Oh, no, 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 you can't be giving communion on the tongue. Oh, no, 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 you can't, uh, whatever, have holy water and dip your hand into it and to, to bless yourself. Who do they think they are? And what cowardly bishops are obeying this um, intervention of the devil's henchmen in the worship of the divine Lord? What kind of sissies are running the church? Anyways, because there is no confined... Uh, okay, or, uh, sorry about that, I'll just read it quickly. Because Christ's reign is, con not, is not confined to the private domain, there is a grave responsibility for Catholics to vote only for public officials who acknowledge and uphold the national law, of which the Creator is the author, and who respect and preserve the liberty and authority of God's holy Catholic Church in the transmission of divine revelation and the offering of true worship to God, meaning that they will not be shutting churches down, they will not be restricting us, they will not be silencing the church and priests and pastors and Christians from proclaiming the divine revelation about morality, about religion, about, uh, uh, yeah, morality or a theological um, teaching. Anyone who votes, anyone who votes for, for, for or supports the politicians or policies that violate natural law and the divine defy divine revelation, cannot escape the judgment of the justice, the judgment and the justice of a holy and omnipotent God. People forget God is not only omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere. He's not only omniscient, meaning he knows everything and everyone, but omnipotent, meaning all-powerful. Credo in unum Deum Patrem Omnipotentem. Father Almighty. He has all power. Omnipotent God. However, in addition to the awareness in our consciences that our political activity and voting have a moral gravity, it is essential that every Catholic realizes that the present revolution, which is worldwide, by the way, in Europe, in North America, in South America, worldwide, let alone the, the selling of the, the betrayal of the Catholic Church in China. It is essential that every Catholic realize that the present revolution, which is threatening the very survival of the United States and other formerly Christian countries in Europe and South America. As I said, in South America, I can't believe it. 
Churches are being torched. Beautiful, huge stone churches are being torched and burned to the ground. Where is the retribution? Where is the, 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 the reaction of the faithful? Where is the, where is the police allowing them to go enter and burn down churches? And it's happening in Europe and in America and in Canada. So let me read this again. It is essential that every Catholic realize that the present revolution, it is a revolution against God, which is threatening the very survival of the United States and other former, formerly Christian countries in Europe and South America, is not only a political movement, but also a spiritual battle. And I would say it's a spiritual battle primarily, which infuses their political beliefs. In 2 Thessalonians, they quote, Let no man deceive you by any means. Not television, not polls, not uh, the science. The science says, the, the, the science, the science says, yeah, uh, let no one deceive you by any means. For unless there come a revolt, a revolt first, and the man of sin be revealed, that being the Antichrist, the son of perdition, who opposeth and is lifted up above all that is called God, or that is worshipped. So this man of perdition is above all that is called God, and anything that is worshipped, he's more important. More important than God, more important than the sacraments, more important than anything. So that he sitteth in the temple of God. And the temple of God, according to scripture, is not a new temple in Jerusalem. It's not the third temple. The third temple's already been built. Watch my video. The third temple is the temple of Herod. Under Judaism section. But the temple of God, this is from St. Paul. St. Paul says we are the temple of God. The church is the temple of God. Christians are the temple of God. So when he talks about he sits in the temple of God, he sits in the church of God. He sits in our soul. He takes over our souls almost. So this son of perdition, in a spiritual manner, sits in us, in the temple of God. Or, in a reality, when the Antichrist comes, he will be enter into, he will take over. He will be the center of, he will penetrate the church. He will infiltrate, infiltrate the temple of God itself. Showing himself as if he were God. As if he were God, but he's not. So we should always be aware. And remember, there will be the false prophet who will be the religious part of the revolt, who will be promoting the political part of the revolt, who is the Antichrist, the son of perdition, who elevates himself even above God. This moral and spiritual this moral and spiritual revolution, this moral and spiritual revolution strives, strives stealthily and gradually or tyrannically and violently. It started off stealthily, gradually, oh, you know, we should be loving freedom. And now it's turning into being a tyrannical, dictatorial, violently. So this moral and spiritual revolution, moral and spiritual revolution, which leads to a political revolution. So this moral and spiritual revolution strives stealthily and gradually, or tyrannical, or tyrannical and violently to obliterate from the minds and hearts of the population the truths and moral values which constitute the vital foundation of authentic Western civilization. There's a, I don't know if you can still find it, I bookmarked it maybe in 2016 or 2015, I think 2016 or 2017, Donald Trump went to Poland and he said the best speech I have virtually, I think, ever heard. 
It wasn't like, you know, make America great again, none of that stuff. It was more about the defense of Western civilization, about Christian civilization, about Catholic civilization, which built the West, built North America, built the world. Until the revolt, the revolt of the 16th century, the revolt of the Freemasons and liberalism. It was a defense of Western civilization, which is Christian civilization. These truths and moral values, why do they hate them so much? Why do they want to turn them over? Why do they want to say what is what the church calls evil to be good and what the church calls good to be evil? Marriage between man and woman. Oh, that's evil. You're being too restrictive. You're being intolerant. Raise children in virtue and purity. No, the little kid, the little boy thinks he's a girl. Let him have, let him be what he wants to be. Let him be free. Don't be such a such an an evil, intolerant bigot. That's the world we live in now. These truths and moral values are hated because because they are the rem remnants whatever is left over of a Christian culture. Therefore, we see the attacks on marriage and family as, as the inviolable, inviolable heart of society. Therefore, we see the attacks on marriage and, and family as the inviolable heart of society. The rejection of natural law as the foundation of civil law. Natural law is the foundation of civil law. We reject it. It is being rejected. And the social and civil law and the social order. And prohibition of religious homage due to the creator through the true Catholic religion established by Christ. Even the very name, the generic name might even say of God is rejected, is not even uttered. Remember, we are all created in the image of a, a, a you know what the thing is, a, that's what Joe Biden said. He refused to even say God. And whenever they pray, they pray in general, even unfortunately, cowardly Catholic bishops will not utter the name of Jesus Christ in, in a blessing. They will just say God or Creator, people of faith. They are ashamed of Jesus Christ, the only true God. As in the Byzantine liturgy says, Jesus Christ, our God, because He is our God, our Lord and our God. Rejecting that divine truth is the vital foundation of rea rejecting that divine truth rejecting that divine truth is is divine truth is the vital foundation of reality and human life the rebellious seeks to establish in the place of these transcending truths and moral standards either what do they want to do they want to establish what other than transcending truth and moral standards, the power of the state, as in political tyranny, or the absolute power of the individual, as in an anarchy, nihilism, and moral relativism. The bitter fruits the bitter results of the absolutization of the state can be viewed in the evil communist regimes that ravaged the world in the 20th century and continue to, to continue their devastation today in many countries, resulting in the murder of tens of millions of people and the moral corruption of innumerable souls. Our Lady of Fatima said in the, third, in, the, in the Secret of Fatima, she said, the errors of Russia 
that Russia will spread her errors throughout the world. What was she talking about? 1917, communism. Wasn't necessarily talking about the communist dictatorship militarily, but the errors of communism, of Russia, the heart of communism in that day. When the communists were taking over, the vision came to Fatima. Mary came to Fatima. What were the communists? Anti-family, anti-God, anti-church, anti-Christ. That's what we have today. Worldwide, the errors of Russia has spread throughout the world. The moral corruption of immune innumerable souls. The rotten fruits of absolutizing the individual, which entails the rejection that there is any truth or moral law, which individuals must respect and obey. It is seen in the moral depravity so how is this scene? It's in, we see it in the moral depravity, irrationality, people can't think anymore, mindless selfishness, violent anarchy, and sad despair that are rampant today. Absolutely true. Okay, we're almost done. Therefore, at the heart of the present chaos, violence, and abuses of power is... The rejection that anything transcends either the individual and the states. It rejects the authority of God and the natural law. He has established in the very nature of his creatures and the divine law. He reveals through the official perennial, meaning ancient, teaching of, of Christ and his Catholic Church. Cannot change. It's a perennial teaching. It is unchangeable. Truth is unchangeable. Because it's true. If truth can, truth can change, it is not truth. Acknowledging the spiritual roots of the present battle, we are, the church, militant. The church is divided into three parts. The church on earth at the moment, body of Christ, or the church militant. We are in battle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. That's the church militant. Then there is the church suffering, which is the faithful who are on their way to heaven but have un, un, um, repent um, sins that uh, the consequences of sin, um, penances that need to be paid before to be fully purified to enter into the into the into heaven where nothing impure can enter. So they are on their way, but they need to be purified. That's why. Every church, every ancient church, every ancient liturgy prays for the dead. If the dead are in heaven, they don't need our prayers. If the dead are in hell, our prayers won't do them no good. So the only reason to pray for the dead is they are on their way to heaven and we ask God to open the gates of heaven for them, to purify them quickly and have mercy on them and bring them to eternal bliss. So... So we are the church militant. We are fighting. We are soldiers of Christ. We are members of the kingdom of the Christ. We are members of the kingdom of God. And the kingdom has its king. And we are soldiers of the king. Therefore, the heart of this present chaos, violence, um, okay, Acknowledging the spiritual roots of the present battle in the world and in the church, and in the church, and in the church. It's a spiritual battle, not only in the world, in the church as well. We should turn to God in devout prayer, humble fasting, contrite penance, and loving sacrifice. Begging God for mercy and beseeching Christ our King for the defeat of the very sinister and evil agendas at work today. And we must work according to our state of life and responsibility to do what? Promote, proclaim, and defend the truth in the face of so many errors in the church and in the world. As we join our Lord and Our Lady on Calvary and beg God for mercy, let us also pray intensely 
for the purification of the church from the infiltration in the ecclesiastical realm of this rebellious liberalism. Support these monks with your money. Help them build monast their monastery and new foundations, which shows itself in the form of heresy. How is this liberalism shown in heresy? Entailing a departure, a departure from divine truth as formerly and infallibly revealed in sacred scripture and sacred tradition. A contradiction, a contradiction in the unchanging divine moral law promulgated not by any pope or any bishop or any council, but by Christ. And the embodied and embodied by the saints. The omission or perversion of the right worship of God. And the Novus Ordo Mise, the new order of mass, fabricated and produced in, in 1969 in its attempt to replace the real Roman rite, the fake Roman rite of Paul VI, is really very... Uh, it's a perversion of the right worship of God. It is a perversion of the Roman rite. Because why... I will still attend the Novus Ordo when I have no opportunity to go to the ancient rites. Because Christ is still there. The sacrifice is still offered. The Immaculate Lamb can be received. But it is a perversion of rite worship because it's a perversion of the ancient liturgy. It is a simplification of the ancient rite. It is a watering down of Christian Catholic doctrine. And as you pray, so you believe. Okay. And the neglect of the redeeming grace that is attained only through, with, and in the one King and High Priest of all humanity, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then, they end this um, uh, newsletter with a quote from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 675. Um, That's the Catechism published by John Paul II. Here's what it says. Before Christ's second coming, the Church must pass through a final trial that will shake the faith of many believers. The persecution that accompanies her pilgrimage on earth will unveil the mystery of iniquity in the form of a religious deception, offering men an apparent solution to their problems at the price of apostasy from the truth, meaning rejection of the truth. The supreme religious deception, the supreme religious deception, is that of the Antichrist, a pseudo-messianism, like a messiah, by which man glorifies himself. Man glorifies himself. I'm the all in all. It's all me. In place of God and his messiah come in the flesh. Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 675. So we should be on our guard. Every action we do, politically, morally, uh, nothing is out of the realm of God. Nothing political, social, um, um, anything in this life is subject to Christ, is subject to the truth, is subject to his church, is subject to God Almighty, the Trinity, the one and only true God. And where do we know what God wills? We find what God wills through what the church has taught for 2,000 years. What the, what the Holy Scriptures, the very word of God says, what the ancient fathers taught 
in their correct understanding of scripture coming directly from the apostles, which their understanding comes from Christ Jesus himself. This is how we know how to live, how to believe, and how to act. We can't be swept by every wind of doctrine, which St. Paul warns against, getting, getting swept by every wind of doctrine. Oh, we go this way this time, we go that way this time. We're going to up, go up this time, we're going to go down this time. This bishop said that, that bishop said this, this pope said that, that pope said this. What have all the popes for 2,000 years said? What have the bishops in doctrinal matters, things which require assent, what has been taught as truth, not some opinion he wrote in a book or said in a speech or in a, or a plain interview or a movie. What is the truth? Truth no pope can alter, no bishop can change, and no priest can deny. We have to always adhere to it. So this ends their, um, their um, um, newsletter, which was, is from the hermits of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Support them, support them, support them. Give them money, give them prayers, help them out. Good priests, good monks. As you can tell, solid doctrine. True apostolic zeal, which is lacking, which is sorely lacking in priests, bishops, and unfortunately, popes. So that's it. You can look for them, uh, look them up online. I'll place uh, a link to their, uh, so they're in Fairfield, Pennsylvania. So I'll put a link to their uh, website. Uh, at the end of the bottom in the description of the video so help them out support them and you'll get their newsletter it's not published on their website it's emailed to you and um, let's keep the faith let's stay in the one and only church Jesus Christ himself founded which is the Catholic Church upon the rock which is Peter and his successors and all the bishops in communion with him but if how if it happens that a pope or a bishop denies a truth of Christ, we do not abandon, abandon his one and only bride, which is the Catholic Church. We just don't follow the error. Like St. Paul in Galatians faced St. Peter. St. Peter said, well, you know what, I'm not going to eat with the Gentile Christians. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just eat with the Jews. The, the, the Jews which converted, became Catholic, became Christians, became Catholics. The, the, the circumcised. So he came only with the circumcised because the circumcised Christians thought, oh, you know, we can't eat with the, with the unclean, uncircumcised in the flesh. So St. Peter acted in a wrong, almost in a, in, a, in a way which which almost says her, heretical belief, believing in that the, 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 the Gentile Christians are unclean. So St. Paul faced him, faced St. Peter to his face, told him, look, you are, you are to blame. St. Paul says, I faced him to his fame, face because he was to, bl to be blamed. And St. Peter corrected his ways. And because at the first council of uh, Jerusalem, St. Peter says, look, the Holy Spirit came to, to the Gentiles. And we are, that's one of the first decrees of the Council of Jerusalem was, we are all born through the grace of Jesus Christ. Not through a, the, the cutting of the flesh. But being given the grace of Christ through baptism. That is the new circumcision. That is what forms the one people of God in the blood of the Lamb, in the washing of the water of salvation. So, no matter what happens, whatever um, heresies, errors, scandals in the church and out of the world, in the world happens, what we what do we do? We stay in the one and only Church of Jesus Christ, no matter what. We help with all of our our efforts and support financially and prayerfully all the good. Um, religious orders, or priestly societies, parishes, churches that keep the faith, that teach the truth. And we do not give a penny to those who don't. 
We do not give a penny to those who promote error. We do not give a penny to those who uh, defend perversion in the name of love. We don't give a penny to them. We put our money where our faith is. We give strength to those who are standing for the truth and virtue and holiness. And of course, it goes without saying, we have to pray. And on top of that, we have to purify ourselves uh, through prayer, uh, fasting, penance. Uh, try to fast Wednesdays and Fridays. The ancient church in the, in the Didache, which is the most ancient document, it is even older than some of the New Testament writings. And it says Christians in the apostolic age fasted. And when they see, say fasted, they actually mean no food. Not just no meat, just purely no food. They would break the fast at night only with bread and water. But I'm not saying let's go that far. Maybe at least there's no meat. Maybe even just no food till 3 p.m., which is the time Christ died on the cross. If you can do it, you should practice to be able to do it. So they fasted Wednesdays and Fridays. Wednesdays because Judas dis d d d d d betrayed Christ on a Wednesday, and Friday because Christ was crucified on Friday. That's why they fasted Wednesdays and Fridays every single week. That's, that's a small penance. And of course, try to, as I said, find a good parish. If you can't find the traditional liturgy, the real Roman rite, the Latin Mass, first of all, my my position is, go to find a drive an hour to a Latin Mass, to a traditional Roman rite. I don't understand, I cannot figure it out. Read the Missal online. Watch my videos on the Latin Mass. I have, a, I don't know, 10 of them. You don't have to understand much. First few times, just go and sit there. Glance at your Missal. Don't stick your face in a book for like an hour. Go to a sung Mass, a high Mass. Because if you go to a low mass, it, depending on the priest, if he just says it too quietly, you will just find it, what, what is going on? I have no idea. Go to a sung mass where it's chanted, there's incense, you are fully absorbed into the true liturgy. You can join in the Sanctus, in the Agnus Dei, in the Kyrie Eleison, in the Gloria, you can sing the Credo. You are fully immersed. So that's my, uh, don't go to a low mass at the beginning. Go, I mean, I would go to a, a sung mass, high mass almost every time if I have the option. If you don't, can't, there's no way to go to one, find a good uh, parish, a Novus Ordo, I guess, where a priest is a, at least a good priest. He is, treats the sacred, uh, the sacred as sacred, the holy as holy, who teaches true doctrine. Then, as Catholics, we have the option of finding an Eastern uh, Rite Church. Ukrainian Catholic, Malkai Catholic. In some parts of the country, you can find a Coptic Catholic, Armenian Catholic. There's options. But, of course, we always stay Catholic. Because it's the one and only Church of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus will say, if we're scandalized, remember in John 6, where he says, you have to eat my flesh and drink my blood. And people ask, oh, what is this guy saying? I'm going to leave you. And then a lot of his disciples left him. And, and then he said to them, Are you going to leave me too? And St. Peter says, To whom shall we go, O Lord? To whom shall we go? This is his church, the one and only. To whom shall we go? We can't go make up a church. Make up a religion. A religion of the book. I'm going to take the Bible and make my own church. No. One church, one faith, one baptism. One body of Christ. Okay, that's it. That's all. Hope you like this video. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you next time.